word, God's love, is truly made complete in him. This is how we know that we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus walked. So when I got to thinking about, oh, this is to be like him and also to like him. And so what I want to do today, and that's why I asked you about the microphone, because I'd like to hear from you two things. One is, what do you like about Jesus? And what is it you like about Jesus that you wish that you would be more like him? Because we not only like him, but we also, there are areas in all of our lives that we would like to be more like him. So I know that we're a little constrained in terms of time, so I have made kind of a little bit of a list so that you are not left out of the loop, as it were. And because, you know, whenever you ask questions, oftentimes we freeze up and they go, oh, I, I can't think. Just like I was saying on my walk when I said, asked myself the question, you know, Jesus, if I were telling you what I like about you, what is it that I like about you? And, I, you know, I came up with one or two immediately, kind of immediately. Then I had to stop and think. And that gave me pause to say, wait a minute here. I need to verbalize this. I need to kind of get this out in the open. I need to make this public. By the way, I need to tell Jesus this. This is what I like about you, Lord. These are some of the things. And there's a whole long list, and I don't have a big enough list. So it took me, in this case, four miles of walking to discuss some of the things that I liked about him. And then as you get to discussing, why do I like this about him? And how, how is that impacting my life? So, one of the things, and I'm going to kind of run down this list, and you can join in. When we finish this list, you can say, oh, yeah, I want to go back to this because this is what I like. And if somebody likes the same thing, because we all have different views, perspectives on the things we like. I like who he really is. I, I like the, that fact of who he really is, which goes to the, to the point of getting to know him for who he really is. I like that. And that he's willing to allow me to get to know him. And I like the fact that I, I'm only beginning to scratch the surface. And I like the fact that I'm not going to find it all out in this lifetime. And I'm not, I don't think even going to find it out in all eternity. He's going to continue to intrigue me and make me interested. I like the fact that he is the only begotten son. There's only one Lord and one Savior, one Jesus. He is the one and only. I, I, I do like that. There's, there's something awesome in my thinking along that. I like the fact, as he tells us here in First John, John tells us that he's, he's my advocate. He's my intercessor, but not only for me, for other people. And I like that in the, in the sense of the outline prayer, our Father who art in heaven. It uh, goes beyond just my, myself, my immediate family, those people that I'm capable of being concerned about or want to be concerned about. And you know, the reality is, unlike Jesus, and I'm not like Jesus, I'm not as concerned with other people as I am just some immediate ones. And God loves the whole world, and, and I haven't gotten there yet uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I like his faith. In spite of all things, uh, he, he is faithful. Um, I like the, the fact that in reconciliation, in redemption, as well as in forgiveness, there's a smile on our Lord's face and there's a twinkle in his eye. Now, it's kind of like as opposed to, which I don't like, Someone says, I forgive you, but you hear in the tone of their voice and in the look on their face and all of that, you know, I want to forgive you, but I really don't. Jesus is so unlike that. I, I like that there is a, this knowing smile. I knew that. I knew that a lot. And, um, and it's just so welcoming. It's so reassuring in that regard. I like his understanding of me. And interceding on my behalf and his understanding of others. But I like his understanding of me better than the others. Uh, again, 
because I'm a bit selfish, egocentric, and narcissistic, and all of those things, but he understands me, um, and that he is uh, graciously realistic. I would use that term, that he knows who I am, my weaknesses, and he, he's known it for a long time. I also like his kindness, and his mercy, and his, his healing touch. Wow. Um, no. So when I think of healing touch, I like I like that God gives me some connectivity. So I'm going to talk just briefly, which I've talked on before, about a healing touch. And that was the touch, the lady who was going to become my wife, when she reached over the railing and touched my arm, and we never had the first date. It was a in that moment, it was a healing touch. So, I like that. I like what that brings. And the Jesus, when he reaches out and touches us, he touches us in an incredible, wonderful way. You think about, I like the fact that he can reach out and touch a leper and heal him. You know, I, I couldn't do that. I, I don't have that capacity, but I like that about Jesus. I like his gentleness. He, he is a gentleman. And he is gentle. He's never gross or anything like that. I just, I like that. He's a gracious man. I like his humility. I, I absolutely, I adore the humility of Jesus. I, um, I have no words to say how as Lord of Lords and King of Kings that he is so humble and his consistency and his approachability night or day, any time I can approach him and confess to him I, I like that about Jesus I like his friendship and it would break my heart as it were if Jesus said, well you're not my friend oh, my no, I, I like the fact that he made himself my friend He's the one who initiated all that. I, I, I like that very, very much. Uh, I like the way he forgives. And, and I like the way he shepherds most of the time. Most of the time. Because sometimes I don't want him to lead me through the valley of the shadow of death. And sometimes I, I, I you know, green pastures, and uh, I'm not willing to make the trek to get the green pastures and the like. You know, the, uh, all of those things. Because, other, you know, when it comes to shepherding, sometimes we don't want to follow where God leads in, in his will. I, I, I thoroughly like and love his creative power. You know, I think about what the things that God has created, uh, the things that we enjoy, and uh, his creativeness uh, is just incredible. I, I like his authority. I like the way he uses authority and never never abuses authority. I, I like that about Jesus. And I like his godly wisdom. He doesn't think the way the world thinks and in his wisdom. Uh, I like that about him. I like his sense of humor because I think God has an incredible sense of humor. Cause, you know, we go around spouting off and talking as if we know a lot of things and the bottom line is, you know, later on we say, oh, my, how dumb was that? And he just allows that, 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 that he has an incredible, I think, sense of humor. His patience and his attitude of hopefulness, that, you know, he's always making me feel hopeful. I like that about him. I like his truth. You know, he is honest. He is truthful. That he never lies. Um, I like his teaching and the way he teaches and understands. I like his leaderships. So, what what is it that you like about him and why? So that's kind of opening up now for you because I, I've kind of just give you a little bit of a shopping list. And so, Jeanette, you have the microphone. What do you like about Jesus? Well, when you go back to number G on the paper. Um, I Gee, I like him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I uh, just got through writing about the fact that he approached people at their need. 
the man with leprosy, when was the last time somebody had ever touched him? So he deliberately touched him. But the man that was let down through the roof by all of his friends, you know, he just told him to take up his bed and walk. He didn't need a touch. He had friends. He had people advocating for him so hard that they climbed up on the roof and let him down to make sure that he got to Jesus. So he met people where their needs were. And the other thing is that he listens. He listens. He listens to me. And now, what would you like? What do you like about him that you wish you were more like him? I wish I could listen more. Thank you for talking for me. So often, people have to stop what they're saying because I'm already talking. And I'd, I'd love to expunge that out of me, you know, where I just listen and listen and listen and don't say anything until they're done. Are you listening, Dave? Because I'm going to ask you what you like next. I'm just giving you a heads up, Dave. That's, that's all I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Dave, what do you like? Oh, you just... Oops, too, I turned it too loud. There you go. <laughs> okay. That's all right. Just set. Yeah, just set to after you. What well, do you, you like? You want me to go for it? Okay. His grace toward me as a sinner is one of the, the main things that stands out to me. Uh, you know, he's just always there. and It's hard, hard to believe that he just keeps forgiving us for our sins like that. Yeah. And he's gracious in his forgiving. Yeah. And not only me, everyone, of course. Everyone. Yeah. Gisette, what do you like about Jesus? Um, he is the epitome of good. Um, he is the example of what good is. And he inspired me. He's an inspiration to me. I like that. I got somebody to look up to see what I'm supposed to be like. Um, I also like that he completes us. Um, he has everything that we don't have. He is everything that we are not. And by us being with him, accepting him and having him as a big brother and as a king, he completes us. We don't need to be perfect because he is already perfect for us. And um, he's not selfish. I get very disappointed in this world to see how selfish people are, but he's not selfish. You know, he's, he's always wants to do what God wants, what the Father wants. He always wants to do what we want, what we need. So he's, he's, he's not selfish, and I like that. While you're passing that on to someone else, I'm going to share another thing I like about God, about Jesus, is his generosity and his surprise. You see, he surprises us and he does things beyond our expectations. And it's like Jeanette talking about what our needs are. He knows what our needs are. And interesting enough, and we, we kind of laughed about this a bit in Santa Rosa, I, you know, I passed out those little pins. And by the way, I have a pin for you, uh, just that, that has the, the church logo. This is yours. Just a little gift, and very little at that. I was going to throw it. But the interesting thing is two members were having a conversation yesterday, and they were say, one was saying to the other, you know the church pin that I've had for years and years and years, it's running out of ink. And they're just, you know, talking about this old pin. Well, how can I get a refill? And so I show up today with what? A pin. One little pin. Now, you can explain it away, and that's fine if you want to do that. But it's like, Lord, you just, you know our needs. And what, and it's, it's a small thing, but he's there for us. Uh, you know, I, I love that. I, I like that about him and how generous he is and, and surprised. You see, the thing about Jesus that is surprising, it, it's overwhelming. It's never a bad surprise. It's a good surprise in, in the way in which 
He works and He surprises us in our life. And sometimes those surprises come down the road a little bit. And then we look back and we say, oh my, what a surprise. And so I have a scripture that I connect surprise with, and that's, I believe, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9, where it says, I have not seen nor ear heard the things that God has prepared for those that love him and those that like him. And I, and I like Jesus. Uh, I, I like the Lord. And I wanted him to know that. And I just wanted you, you to get an opportunity to say, Lord, this is what I like about you. Anybody else want to make a comment? You can. I thought my wife had a really good comment in Santa Rosa, and I'd like to hear it again. Uh, the comment, several things that she liked about Jesus. Um, well, the thing I like, one of the many things that I like about Jesus is that uh, although he knows everything and all things, he's not a know-it-all. And the way that he deals with us and um, is, is very gentle and, and that he has that humility of uh, despite, I mean, men, we, we could look really foolish to him if he chose to present that in that way, but he's always just so gentle and kind and gracious to us mudballs, as I call us. Um, he calls us his friend, and, and, and uh, he loves us and created us uh, according to his good purpose and will. So... I, should, I don't know if I should even use mud ball because it seems a little disrespectful, perhaps. So um, I just love that he is just so gracious and gentle with us as we go about our, our lives here on earth. And um, the other thing that I really like about him is that he's ever-present and we are never alone. Um, and any time we need him, he will not fail us. He will not desert us. He will be there for us. And I also like about him that he shows himself to us, and that was in the scripture that was read, um, the, oh, the scripture that Jeanette read to us this morning, that he shows And I remember reading that passage at some point, and that's kind of jumping out at me, that he actually shows himself to us. And one of the ways he does that is, as my husband was saying, with little surprises ways that he shows up unexpectedly, and you're thinking, that is such a God thing. And then it allows us just to really appreciate uh, how, how attentive he is to every little detail, and I just love that about him. Yeah. My, that, that's powerful. Yeah, his attention to detail in our lives. Yeah. It, it is awesome. So anybody else want to share something that they like about Jesus? You see, because the bottom line is we, we kind of ask ourselves this question. And now this is going to kind of maybe fall a little heavy on your hearts in a way. But your time is up. For telling you what you like about it. The sermon is over. I don't want any of us to finish life and say, Lord, I would have liked to tell you what I like about you. And that's why I give the sermon, so that we might think that indeed the worst thing, well, I say, a thing that we don't want to do is give thanks to him. We don't want to have an incredible pause in thinking, well, I've never thought about what I like about Jesus. Because you see, Jesus said, would say to us, here's what I like about you. Here's what I like about you. I have loved you all my life. I have loved you. I like the fact that you just kept getting up when you got knocked down. I like the fact that your heart broke when you saw somebody else and you and you cared and you showed that care. I like the fact that you gave that person a cup of cold water. And I like the fact that you said, you know, this isn't about me, this is about my Lord who, who gave me blessings and 
gave me water and, and I share. I, I, I like the fact that you're willing to share. You know, we ask God's blessing on the offering. I, I, I'm, I'm so glad and I like that you're willing to share what I have given to you. I like the fact that you kind of live under that adage, you know, come to our home. We'll just add some water to the soup. And I, I like the fact that you, you like people who I like. I like you. I like you a whole lot. I like you so much that I, I wrote the word. I gave you a Bible to, to, to tell you how much I like you. And I want you to know that. I liked you not only from the beginning. I liked you when I was in pain on the cross. I like you in the present. I like you in the past. And I really like our future together. I think Jesus tells us in so many ways, and I've mentioned it from time to time, you know, when I hear a dove coo and all that, and the peace and the kindness and the gentleness, Jesus tells us he likes us. He knows who we are. And we would take the time and the thought and the energy to return back to our high priest who sits at the Father's right hand and say, Jesus, I like you. Here's why. And Jesus, I'd like to be like this. I'd like to be like you. Help me to be like you. That it may be to your glory, to your praise, and your honor because I know it put would put a smile on your face and also it would put a smile on your father's face to know that not only do we love the Lord the son of God the only begotten son of God we like him for so many reasons and we like praying and giving God thanks let's conclude in prayer Father we thank you very much for your blessings we thank you for your son we thank you for what he is like, because he is like you, the express image of you. May we be like him, and may we like him forever and ever. Amen. Feeling the blues today, or tired of life already? Do you have questions about life, or need spiritual advice? The Worldwide Church of God is located in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto, California. We welcome everyone to attend our worship services with us every week at the times listed on your screen.